Many mock drafts have wide receivers CeeDee Lamb and Jerry Judy both being taken in the top 20, if not top 15. Skip and Shannon have gone back and forth, backing each guy heading into tonight's draft. So, Shannon, who will be the better NFL player, Jerry Judy or CeeDee Lamb? Skip, I like Jerry Judy. I think he's an elite level route runner at, at the collegiate level. And I think that's one of the most important attributes a receiver can have, and that's his ability to run route, his ability to create separation. Skip, I've seen very, very fast receivers. I'm talking about sub 4-4. Four, four, and they can't get open because they tip their routes, because they can't get in, out, in and out of breaks, because they don't know how to control that speed. Now, he's not 4-2 like rugs, but he's plenty fast enough. And the separation that he gets, because, Skip, the thing is, is that I need to let the, uh, the quarterback know I'm about to enter a break, and I'm coming out. And his entering the break and coming out of the break, the amount of separation, because, Skip, that's the most important thing, separation. You're not going to be throwing in the huge windows in the, in the NFL like you do in college, Skip. You see all these guys like, how did he get? No, 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 no. Unless it's a blown assignment, you're not getting that kind of separation. So sometimes you only need is a half a step, and he can create separation that's second to none, for a collegiate receiver. His ability to run route skip is on the elite level. And I'm, I'm shocked that someone so young at the collegiate level can run routes like this. You can tell he put a lot of time in it, but that's not unusual. You look at the Alabama receivers, you look at Calvin Ridley, you look at Amari Cooper, you look at this kid, Judy, Julio Jones to be 230 plus can run routes tremendous. So they, they, that's telling me that the receiving coach at Alabama is very good at what they do. They teach great technique. Skip, I'm taking Jerry Judy because he was able to put together back-to-back 1,000-yard -back season, double-digit touchdown his sophomore year. He was a Blitnikoff winner against elite-level players. The SEC, you know what they represent, Skip Bayless. In uh, the Big 12, they don't really play that out there. So they're going to be about five or six guys from the SEC that go in the first round on the defensive side of the football. And so I'm taking Jerry Judy the better receiver and to have the better NFL career. For weeks, we've gone back and forth about this, as Jenny just noted. You make all fine points about Jerry Judy, and I will be the first to admit, if he somehow fell to Dallas at 17, the Cowboys <laughs> needing a slot receiver, I wouldn't hate it if they <laughs> took Jerry Judy if he fell to 17. But I'm going to sum it up for you one last time with this. CeeDee Lamb is going to be a number one receiver for some pro football team. And Jerry Judy will end up being a number two receiver. CeeDee plays bigger than he lists. Jerry Judy plays smaller. CeeDee Lamb was all that that there was to throw to for Jalen Hurts last year, and nobody could stop him, even in the woeful, defensively challenged Big 12. It was CD or bust, and he would get triple covered, and they couldn't stop him. They couldn't contain him. They, they couldn't hold him. They couldn't get him on the ground after the catch, because as I've told you, CD is no lamb after the catch. He is a lion. You can't get him on the ground. And we talked a couple of weeks ago about the Bob McGinn annual survey. This was in The Athletic, in which he polled 17 personnel executives about those two receivers. And 10 first place votes went to CD and five went to Jerry Judy. And the reason is that, as one of the scouts was quoted again anonymously, you, you throw the ball up, CD Lamb is coming down with it. And then another scout said, he just catches the crap out of it. That's what he does. He is DeAndre Hopkins meets Anquan Bolden. He is so physical, so mentally tough, see ball, catch ball, run with ball, that I would take him as my go-to receiver over Jerry Judy. And then another scout was quoted in the Bob McGinn piece about Judy, and I complete, this, this is the essence of Jerry Judy. And I agree with you about his route running. It's spectacular and way advanced beyond his years. But the scout said of Jerry Judy, he's lived the life of the ultimate football playground. 
Speed merchants on the outside, obviously, at Alabama. Point guard at quarterback, five-star offensive line, draftable running back, Najee Harris, who's going back for another year. Jerry Judy plays in the slot and was never pressed. No, he wasn't, because you've got blazing track team speed on the outside. Obviously, Devontae Smith and Ruggs. Devontae Smith is going back, but watch, he'll be a first round, high first-round pick next year, and he led them in receiving this last year at Alabama. So in the middle of that, if you put Jerry Judy running precise routes in the slot and you got the little point guard quarterback in Tua, who's quick with his release when he's healthy, and all of a sudden, he, Jerry Judy's going to look more spectacular than he'll play in the National Football League. So to me... I watched CeeDee Lamb dominate games in which he was the only option for Jalen Hurts. And that's a pro football player. That's an NFL number one receiver. So again, I'm gonna, if, if I need, if I have a need for somebody who's going to take over my receiver's room and be my go-to, I'm going CeeDee Lamb. Let us think here for a second, Skip. Um, his freshman year, he had Baker Mayfield throwing him passes. His next year, he had Kyler Murray. Both guys, number one overall dra draft picks. Now we're hearing reports that Jalen Hurts could go somewhere maybe even late first or early second round. Oh, he played with slug quarterbacks, right? Because that, that, the article just talks about what, Ju what uh, Judy had. Oh, two number one overall draft picks, a quarterback, and a guy that's possibly going to go in the second round. Wow. Oh, he had Hollywood Brown. He had another receiver that's going back. And we talked about those running backs. Those running backs averaging six, seven yards a clip. A number one offensive line in football for two straight years last year. LSU won that title. Skip, but let me ask you this. Now, I know a guy, you know a guy very well, that was great at jump balls and did a great job with run after the catch. But all of a sudden, his technique wasn't what it needed to be. You know that guy, Skip? You know the guy I'm talking about, don't you? And the guy that had the technique. Yeah. When you have technique, Skip, because guess what? One day... You're not going to be able to jump as high. One day, you won't be able to run as fast, but that technique will hold you sound. Jerry Judy has that, Skip Bayless. And you know why guys don't, didn't press Jerry Judy? Because they don't want him to take that chance. Skip, he's slippery. And it's hard to press in the slot because he has so much room. And you miss in the slot, it's over. It is over. Now, we're going to find out. There's a reason why guys, listen about what, press it. Press Julio, you should. And watch what he does to you. He's going to move you out the way and going to beat you deep. There's a reason why DBs don't press certain receivers, because they know. There's a reason why they didn't press Jerry Judy. Skip, look, I'm not saying C.D. Lamb won't be good, because I believe he's going to be a very good receiver. But I'm taking Judy. That technique, his ability to separate, I've seen enough. The tape don't lie, Skip. Like you tell me, Skip, watch the tape. The tape ain't going to lie. Okay, it doesn't lie. And by the way, you were never a Baker Mayfield fan, and you definitely were not a Kyler Murray fan, and you say two is by far the best quarterback in this draft. So I don't know yeah. why you're comparing yeah. those three. You're losing me there. No, no, and then the other thing is, no, no, yes, I'm not you're losing. right. CD is, yeah, CD is a small-town Texas kid like Des Bryant was coming out of Oklahoma State, obviously. Des had some off-the-field issues that you had to deal with and, and sort of sign off on that Jerry Jones had to say, okay, right. I think we'll be okay with him. C.D. Lamb right. is a great kid, a leader. I, I, I don't know any baggage whatsoever, so I think he'll be more trustable to continue to be a weight room warrior that he is and a hard worker. So I don't think there's that kind of risk going forward between CD no. that, that Dez had, obviously, no. as a Dallas Cowboy. No, no, Skip, no. And, and, if, if, and if it came off that way, that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about solely on the field. I'm talking about a guy that got a lot of jump balls that was great after the catch, but his technique wasn't where it needed to be. So as he started to age, and all of a sudden, those 50-50 balls became 25-75, knocked down or the DB was getting it. And all of a sudden, the run after the catch wasn't the same. He didn't have techniques, and he was tipping his routes, and then he couldn't get over, get open. Because remember, Skip, Will McClay said, I mean, he spelled it out. A guy that struggles one-on-one, -on -one, a guy that has issues getting down the field. So I'm just saying, Skip, look, and I was never a burner, 
but I was technically sound because I started as a wide receiver, Skip, and so I moved to tight end. So I could always run routes better than the average tight end. So for me, I was able to stay in 14 years. Probably should have got another should have got another year making an even number, 15. Oh, 15 ain't even. But I wanted 15, but I had a better opportunity. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.